My name is Andy McCormick. I'm a lawyer here in Houston, Bel Air, really, but Houston for all intents and purposes. Uh, Paul Yates was my best friend, and he's been gone for almost 20 years, and probably 60% of my practice is still because of him. Uh, we became very close friends, and I miss him a bunch. Paul was such a good friend and a great, great person. Uh, of all of the contractors we had, we had a lot of good friends, but Paul was pretty special. He just, uh, the way he conducted his business, the way he expected everything to be done correctly. Dad was uh, very compassionate uh, about masonry. Um, just as my grandfather was. Uh, I am now third generation and my son, which I know my father would be very proud of, is fourth generation Mason. Um, I think dad got a lot of uh, his want and need out of masonry from his father, uh, Leo Yates. Uh, Leo was so passionate about masonry that uh, we still laugh about it now. The house that he built here in Houston uh, didn't have a wood stud in it. It was all brick, it was all block, and including his bed. His bed was the, the, the headboard, the end rail, or the side rails, and the end board was all masonry. Now, never moved, right? <laughs> but literally, the floors were pavers, the walls were brick and block, the exterior was brick. He ran some work, and I was an apprentice, and they sent me out to his job site. And I didn't know him, uh, being a superintendent, and uh, he was, you know, the guy that was watching everything. So I, I saw I saw this guy over there that looked like it might be him. So I went up and said, are you Mr. Yates? That was his reaction. I said, well, I'm here to go to work. Where do you want me? He said, or I say he said, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. So I turned around and looked, and there was a pile of block. There was a scaffold, there was people on the scaffold, so I just went over there and went to work. Well, I worked there for about two months. Never heard a word he said. He never said a word to me. Very, very quiet fella. But people used to ask me, because I do talk a lot, said, how, do you, how did you become friends with this fella? And I said, it's, he, he said he, he never talks. I said, all you got to do is start talking about masonry, and then he'll go on forever. Uh, I'd say, Mr. Yates, I just saw this, or I just saw that. It was, when I got to know him, it was before the internet, so you were literally talking about pictures in magazines or something else, and he'd go on forever. Uh, it, it, that was his passion, and he thought the world of everything that had to do with masonry. And he thought everybody should learn how to be a Mason and how to do it right. He doesn't say a whole lot. I'd say he probably talks about 10% of the time and he, he listens or thinks about 90% of the time. But it didn't take me long to find out that he was probably, anytime we went to a meeting or something, he was probably the smartest guy in the room. I worked for him, um, I guess, for 23, 24 years, and, and I, I was nervous the whole time. But I think most people were not. And uh, he gave us opportunities to, uh, to go, uh, you know, beyond what we thought we could do. I mean, I never thought that I could be a successful estimator. I wanted to be one, but I never thought I could. I never thought I could be a project manager or field superintendent, but I did all those things for him. And, and he, he was able to, um, I guess in a way, uh, in a quiet way, encourage people to, he, he supported them. He, he was able to uh, support these people uh, and give them a kind of a silent confidence that they could do something. To, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't go out there and, uh, and, and say, hey, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way. He would always come out and say, what do you need? And he was always involved in the, in the organizations. Uh, 
when we needed something for uh, any of our apprenticeship programs, you could ask Paul and it would happen. Uh, he was one of the probably top two or three contractors in town. You could always call to him for help on just about anything. Uh, it, it drew him to those associations. And uh, with that, then the relationships that he had with guys that were his competitors, but on the outside, they were friends. Uh, they all had an ultimate goal to make masonry better. And his relationships with men like DeWitt Brown and G.W. Vesey and Bill Bartlett uh, and, and others uh, was tremendous. They could all sit down at the table, be friends, and talk about what was best for our industry, and then walk out the door going, I'll get you on the next job. I don't know any other Masons, even though I represent quite a few of them, like I knew Mr. Yates. Uh, this is an honor that could not have gone to a more deserving man. He loved your industry. Uh, he absolutely believed in teaching young kids how to become Masons. And I know there's a need for that now. Uh, if anything, with his legacy, keep training those young kids so you have a, you know, a backstop or, a, you know, a bench for new kids coming up. And if they love the business as much as he did, there won't be a problem in this industry.